these I came up with, like I said, about a month ago, and I don't know, just really wanting something that goes on the um, the edge of a journal page. And let me just grab, because I don't have any spare journals here today, guys. Um, but this, there's a couple of things you can do here. You can glue this three sides so that you got a tuck spot, or if you cut this longer you can make a hinge and then fold it so that it would be glued to this side of your book page and it would f flip open. Now I have done that with um, paper but this one today I've done with cardstock knowing that um, I would just adhere it so that it's a, a tuck spot but I absolutely love that. I want to show you guys. Now this is using antique papers papers, um, and I will probably carry on with those papers today because I've got them out. Oops, sorry. Um, and then it's just been backed onto um, cardstock and then I've collaged paper underneath. And then this is one of the Tim Holtz uh, water flower, um, wildflower. I think this is set number one because I've had these for a while. And then I'll show you how to make this, this cluster super, super easy. And as long as you've got a flower punch or framelits, you can do this. So I'll show you guys. Okay, so starting with your cardstock, just decide how wide you want um, your strip to be. And I like them to be, well, probably, I guess they're about an inch and a half because that gives a really nice little tuck spot there. So you're going to do that. And you're going to just get that inked inked around the edges. Oh gosh guys, oh these lights. I got some new lights in the studio and you know with me with the heat they're putting out some heat so oh not nice. Okay let me get some papers here. You know I'm loving the teals in this one. That, that uh, had some beautiful dark colors but I think I'm just trying to think. Oh, these papers. I'll show you these. These I've got so many collections. I think I'm going to use this one because I like all the vibrant colors. Um, I've, I've bought so many collections from this shop. Um, they're just a lot of fun to work with. Now, what I tend to do is whatever my background paper is, that's what I'm going to come back and make my flowers out of. So, first, let's get a bit of um, just various papers um, scraps here. Let's get those. You know I've got my big folder here. Um, so let me get some torn. I took some of this. This is just what I've torn off of my papers when I'm adding it to the journal. So it's tea dyed and I just want to get that down you can use a glue stick with, for this because um, I like to come back before I attach the little cluster and run it through the machine. And depending on the look you want, that one has been done in white thread. And I'm going to put this here. The reason I've done it this way is because I, I know I'm going to cover this straight edge. Um, or you can come back with the black thread, but my machine is loaded up. For, uh, with the white thread today. So the other good thing about doing this is obviously you're you're making you're building up weight so that this tuck spot is it's going to be a little bit you know heavier so it's easier to to put things in there. So yeah, this was uh, not what I planned for today. I've got some orders. I'm working on some little Christmas. Um, junk journals, ornaments I'm trying to get out, and then I have got a um, guest design sh um, team project for um, Nikki Ad Adagun her, um, for one of her digital kits. Um, so I'm working on that journal. That I was intending to do that today, but... Um, 
uh, it's, you know, these things happen, so change a plan, but I'm going to have to get on with that as quick as I get off of here, and then I still want to go back to some more of these the little mini journals, because I really did enjoy them, and I could have done that with Nikki's kit, but uh, I had already printed it out as a full size, so... <laughs> Okay, so I'm quite happy with that because most of this is going to get covered. Um, and again, these rulers really do help um, for this kind of thing. So then just kind of deciding, you know, what you're going to try to get on here because I kind of want to keep the pink for my flowers so that that's going to stand out above the other. So I'm just actually going to come with it this way. And I'm not going to have it perfectly straight because I think it's kind of nice. Oh, they are such beautiful, beautiful papers. Because I just want to get a little bit of the pink because that way this flower is predominantly pink. That's going to really stand out, I think, against the background. what I'm doing here. I think I want something, a little bit of this down at the bottom. Now you don't have to, you can do this all in one strip. Um, I have done that in the past, but this today I'm just kind of, you know, adding random pieces to it. And I don't want to cover all of that music sheet, but I think it needs just a bit more of the green. Let me run to the machine and do some sewing, and then um, I'll be back and we'll carry on to the next step. Okay, guys, that you can see, I've done some stitching on it. Um, like I said, if you use the black, it would come out, you know, the stitching's going to stand out a lot more, but I, I don't want to change that thread. <laughs> but you can go back and look at... Um, I'll put the link below to the um, the journals that I've got these in, and you can see the difference because the black really is beautiful, um, depending on you know what you're working with. But this is equally pretty. Okay, so the really this is my favorite part now because you know I love flowers. So here we are. What I've got. Let me grab. I've got one more punch. Okay. So these are the three punches, and unfortunately, guys, I think <clears throat> I think all of these are retired now from Stampin' Up, but I bought them years ago. If you don't have these, then if you've got some framelits, but I would recommend, and you don't have to do this, it's just personal preference. I like to have one of the flowers in a different shape, as you can see. It just, I don't know, it just kind of stands out a little bit nicer, but... What I've done um, with mine is I do two of the large ones, and in fact, let me do this bottom one over here. Because the bottom one you don't see that much, I want to save the, um, the darker colors for the top. <clears throat> so I've got two of those. And then 
one of these and then I, I come back and use one of the um, let me see if I can get to this one easier. This is the Pansy Punch. And I'll show you how, how you can make these stand out a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to get that mess out of the way. I hope you guys can see that okay. I'm, this is I like to ink on this paper. So now I just start inking up the edges. Now there's a couple of things you can do to make these flowers. It depends on how dimensional you want them. If you want them to really um, stand up, you need to spritz this with water, crumble it, and dry it with a heat gun. I don't do that in the journals just because I don't want the extra bulk because that still has got a lot of dimension and I'll show you the reason why. Um, you can still achieve the dimension without necessarily the bulk. And this is a great, well it's great use for for scraps because you could take scrapbook paper, you don't have to have a digital. So, um, But I wouldn't go with a really thick scrapbook paper because there again it's going to get really bulky. Um, but now just kind of crumble those up. Now the other thing I like to do is ink the back because sometimes, you know, just do the, the edges of them um, because sometimes when you crinkle them that white might kind of flip over but it just all adds to the it makes them look more realistic, I think, by doing it this way. I love flowers. I I used to just oh, get video after video after video of how to make flowers. I'm just crazy about them. They add so much um, interest to a card. Um, and like I said, you know, if you want to, just spritz it a little bit with water, and and then. Um, if you hit that with heat gun, it's going to really firm that up. Thousands of tutorials on, I mean, I'm no expert, so, you know, just do a search. There's so many tutorials on how to make paper flowers. It's unbelievable. And I don't do them as often as I used to when I was card making. I made quite a few of these, but I, I don't make that many cards now. Nobody seems to uh, write anymore, which is a real shame. I miss I miss you know, getting nice mail. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, yes, I, I, let me grab. Speaking of nice mail, this arrived the other day from Carol Laws. Thank you, Carol. <sighs> Sorry to have put it in this video, but it just occurred to me I haven't done a video for this, but isn't this fantastic? It's like a um, vinyl lace. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to get myself a bottle and try to do some um, images on my avocado and tea dyed papers. And I think I'm going to start doing some coffee dyed again to get a bit darker. Um, but I love that. So thank you so much, Carol. That was so sweet of her to send that. Um, Carol's just a, I'm sure you all know, she's got a YouTube channel on here, so you, Carol... Ian Laws is her channel, and uh, she does beautiful journals. But thank you so much, Carol, for that. I intended to put that on the um, video yesterday, and I was in such a rush because I was trying to do dinner last night that um, I, I had already done the video, and I was like, oh, no, I, I forgot to mention Carol's happy mail. So <laughs> thank you, Carol. But like I said, I'm really sorry it was in this kind of a video, you know. Uh, but we're not going to dwell on the haters. Okay, so you got those. You can see now they're really crumpled up. So I like that design. So I'm going to put this one on the bottom. Then I'm going to layer and just layer it, you know, so that they're not matched up. And then... Then on this one, I'm going to put a little, I'll tell you what I'm going to do just quickly. Let me go ahead and do this. Just put a little dollop of um, 
your fabric tag or three and one. Sorry, it's three and one. Yeah, no, this is fabric. Oh, oh, I didn't even realize that was fabric tag over here. I try to because there's a little bit price difference here between the fabric tag and um, the three and one, and I try to keep that three and one here, but I must have with all the rushing around, started using it. Um, so then, <coughs> just take some uh, eyelash trim there and then push this one down. And don't worry, this is just really to temporarily hold that because we're going to come back with a beautiful button, which I have not picked out just yet. Let me see. Let me get my little buttons out here. Um, I might go with a, just a cream colored in that because I, you see all that color. See, this one was kind of washed out, so I chose that. I love that. I had a beautiful turquoise one, but it was split. I'd stitched it on there, and it just fell off, and then I realized it was split in the center, but it was a pretty button. I keep saying I'm going to make myself... Um, that's quite pretty. And I found with these flowers... Those ones that are made, oops, sorry, like that, you can get away with using those up in these as well, but I'm not going to today on that one. I kind of like that. Now, let me see if I've got a tiny, a tiny piece of lace. I kind of like having just some other little something under it. I've got some snippets, I'm sure. Okay. Here's my needle and thread. Oh dear. Okay, I gotta get. Sorry, I've got to get a needle really quick because I want to stitch that together. <clears throat> hmm. Who knows? I might step on it in a minute. I'm sure I had it up here. <laughs> The Trials of a Crafter. Now that's the wrong needle, too, so hang on, guys. Wow. Get it together, Gina. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is just stitch this in the center, and then I'll get some of the little die cuts, and we'll put those on there as well. Oh, tomorrow, guys, stay tuned. We've got a um, five on the dime challenge. It's going to be um, published tomorrow. Um, Martina has chosen the items for this month's challenge. So, wow, was it a challenge. <laughs> for me, it was. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. for. I'll have a video up for that tomorrow. Um, I hope you like what I come up with. She's such a talented um, artist. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly stitch this first, and then I'll put a little extra glue. I just like to secure all of this a little bit extra. I don't always trust glue when it comes to the buttons and laces, so... I like to make sure this is all sewn first. Sorry, I was doing that off camera. Just I just took the tiniest piece of um, of lace that I had in my little. I've got the catch-all drawer that all my little offcuts go into, and I want to glue that, and then. I'm 
put a bit more glue under there because that still feels a little bit loose there. I'm getting to the end of that bottle and I've thinned that out one time but I think I'm going to have to go back and thin that just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to let that sit there for just a second and while that's drying, let's go ahead and get some of our uh, da, 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 die cuts. So, you know, in the past I have added what's very pretty is if you've got a little piece of the sorry or any kind of trim, you can put that down, run the, mach the machine over it a couple times, and it looks like the stem of the flower, and that's a beautiful effect. And like I said, I'll put the links below um, within those journals where I have incorporated this um, so you can check out the different the variation. But on here, let's put a few. So I spent one day just cutting out all these little <coughs> wildflowers from Tim Holtz. Aren't they gorgeous? I love this. Every time I pull it out, I'm like, oh, because it was a lot of work getting those um, cut out. But, God, they're beautiful. So I think you could almost get away with some green on this one. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I like that. I think I'm going to do that. And that's the same shade, maybe. I don't want to put too much. And there's another one that... Uh, this one. This is the Wildflower too. Now, I wish... Hmm. That's got possibilities, doesn't it? But I feel like that's going to take away from that flower, so I won't use that. Just, I think I'm really liking this one. I wonder how it would look with two shades of green. Oh no, I don't like that. You're probably sitting back there saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there, I'm happy with those two. I'm going to leave the flower, because just because, I don't know. I don't want it to be too busy. I think I think there's a a worry of that that happening. And I don't like two now. I think it just needs one. I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that because I think if you put two you need to go you need to go for three. <laughs> and three was too much. <laughs> That's my rationale. <laughs> Okay, here we are, here we are, here we are. Okay. That little tip really did make the difference on that that glue because now you can use it on these no problem and that flower I'm sorry I'm gonna have to go back to my fabric tag just because I want to make sure that's absolutely secured yep now <laughs> you can sew this to it, and I have done that, I'll be honest. Oh, let me get my lace. I've got another piece here somewhere. I love this stuff. It's like a, a um, you guys have seen me working with this before. It's kind of like a tablecloth, but it feels like the cheesecloth material. And I love it. I'm going to have to be on the <laughs> lookout for this. Um, but when you're looking for something, you can never find it, can you? Um, yeah, let me just get as much of that on there as I can. 
as I said, you can stitch this. Oh goodness, I got a mess here. That Fabri-Tac is good glue, but my goodness, does it present a headache. Absolute drives you nuts. Just get a nice gallop on there. Okay, that's This is so pretty showing um, this particular one. I don't know. I just, like I said, I, I think I only gave 25 cents, well, 25 pence or something here. And, uh, that, and at the time, I didn't even know what I was going to use it for, but I've used it for a lot of things right now. This is another thing I, <clears throat> I've kind of got pet peeve about. I don't like my laces laying flats and I should have done this up into a I could have taken my machine uh, stitch because that looks a lot prettier if it's kind of so you can do that you know just tuck it up under there with a little bit of glue but like I said I should have done that with, um, when I was hand sewing it you can gather it up that way it just doesn't look like, like you just laid a piece of lace on there Oh, these make me happy, very happy. I really, really love these. I'm, I really enjoy those in the, um, they're just something that you just, I don't know, adds a lot of interest to the page. So let me see if I can flip this over now. Oh, that's a mess as well. So let me remove that so you guys can really see now. So there they are. Um, and you can see how easy those are to, to add. And as I said, if you want to make this a flip over, I've done that, you know, when you fold your page in the, um, if this is your, your journal page, you can just adhere that and then that will flip over and you've got a nice writing space on the back. Or, as I said, just glue three sides and you've got a beautiful little tuck spot. So. Okay, guys.